What's up guys, Dr. Teddy here with Citizen Athletics and today I wanted to give you guys a home gym tour of my brand new home gym. renovated our house and in the addition we did a nine foot ceiling basement so we are in a basement right now we've got nice high ceilings so that I'm able to do overhead work able to jump and also able to do pull-ups without banging my head on the ceiling above me speaking of pull-ups I want to show you guys one of my favorite little pieces here this is the adjustable pull-up bar and this thing is sweet so the adjustable pull-up bar, you might be asking yourself, why would you have an adjustable pull-up bar? Well, first of all, it looks sweet because you can angle it up or you can put it flat and you can adjust the height. So for some TRX exercises, it's really nice to put it up high, like a face pull, for example. For some exercises, I might want it a little bit lower. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with changing the height of it. And I can also put it down against the wall out of the way for filming sometimes. Some of the crucial pieces that you need for a pull-up bar, you gotta have your hanging ab straps and some sort of suspension training device. I also put this here just because I wanted to separate things because we have so much stuff condensed in the back of the gym here and not a lot in the front. And I wanted to leave space so that I could film, move around, have a few people here training at the same time so I had to kind of condense everything down here and then create some other areas to spread out. So we've got pull-up bar number two. This is the Rogue Jammer pull-up bar. And honestly, I just got this because it looks sweet. I like the knurled handles on it. I like the way it kind of brings everything together and just continues this kind of like dark ceiling gym theme. Some of my cardio equipment that I have down here, I love doing high intensity cardio kind of fast twitch work. So we have the Airdyne bike here, the Schwinn AD7. This is a really nice Airdyne bike. And then I also have the Ski Erg, which I mounted against the wall here, drilled some holes in the ground as well. So if you ever have a Ski Erg or you think about wanting to invest in like a, a piece of cardio equipment at home that doesn't take up a lot of room, this is a great option. You see how small of a, of a footprint this thing takes up? It's like almost nothing. And honestly, I like the Ski Erg a lot better without the platform because I'm not ever hitting the handles on the side and I can change my foot position and foot width a little bit too. For my low intensity steady state cardio, I love the Concept2 Bike Erg. And this is something I do almost every day, anywhere from 10 minutes up to like an hour or so. And I'll just sit up on here, cycle lightly, low intensity, heart rate like 120 beats per minute. And I'm emailing, I'm making programs for, for patients, for clients. I'm doing a variety of computer work, video editing up here too. So I love the bike erg desk. Let's move on to the more exciting stuff, the actual weights, the lifting. Down here I have the Sorenex Apex Rack. And I did a lot of research before I landed on this. And the Apex Rack is a beautiful piece of equipment to condense at like an entire kind of commercial gym cable and squat rack system into one piece of equipment. I've got my two cables on each side and this is a two to one ratio, meaning that I can pull it out really far. Most lat pull downs are a one to one ratio, so the weight on the stack is the same as the weight in your hands, but they don't go as far because there's only one pulley spool. This has two spools, so you can go twice as far. The weight is half, so if I have 30 pounds on there, I only have 15 pounds in my hand. So it's great for dialing down the resistance on exercises like arms, shoulders, that sort of thing. Whereas like a lat pull down type of cable stack, I wouldn't really be able to like dial in rear delts and these lighter exercises. The challenge with the two to one cable is that you can't go as heavy. So when you have your lat pull down, when you have your, your heavier, exercise that you want to do, this stacks 300, so in my hands I only feel 150 at the most, I've got this thing called a gym pin. And this gym pin is freaking sweet. So what you do is you throw the gym pin into the stack, and then you throw weight on top of that. I can do a 200 pound lat pull down by adding extra weight 
to the stack by putting it on the gym pin. So this is how it works. Throw your weight on there, and then you've got, well, you get the idea. So the gym pin is a great accessory tool. If you're just super jacked and you're always like, man, these cable machines aren't strong enough for me, then you gotta get a gym pin and bring it to the gym with you. Now you guys are probably asking yourselves, what the hell are these round bowling ball olive things behind me? And these are fat bells and they're really just a conversation piece. They are fun, they add a little bit different variety to resistance training exercises. The fat bells bring the center mass of the weight closer to your elbow, closer to your shoulder, so they make an exercise a little bit easier, technically, but they also make it a little bit more joint friendly. And if you're doing something like a bicep curl where you're supinating your hands as you go, the fat bell doesn't put as much torque on your forearm while you're doing that, so you can get in and out of these positions a little bit more easily. So the fat bells are nice. Uh, they're a fun tool. To be honest with you, I got a few of them during COVID when I was just trying to pick up some weights for a home gym. And then I figured I'd just complete my set. And I do like them a lot. To be honest with you, the thing that I use the most for that type of weight, even more than kettlebells, is just my power blocks. For my power blocks, I got these custom knurled handles by a company called JD Gym Equipped. And no affiliation with them or anything like that. You just slide out, easy, with a bolt, you just slide out the existing power block handles, which are like these goofy black rubber things, and you slide these in. And I'll tell you, it's a very comfortable grip. More than any other type of grip, I prefer this knurled handle for like high repetition rows, for pressing too, it just feels good in your hands and it helps to kind of build up your callus a little bit, whereas those, those rubber handles just kind of get uncomfortable when you hold them for a while. Now, to keep going on the Sornex Apex Rack. The Sornex Apex Rack has so many different things that you can do with it. And this is honestly all Sornex racks. It's not just the Apex, but it's got all these different, so we've got the jammer arms here. And if we undo, Got to get Velcro on your jammer arms to keep them in place because it's really annoying when they move when you don't want them to. But we've got these jammer arms here that you can load up with plates and you can put handles on them to, to press out with them. We've also got a utility bench here. So this utility bench can spread across the spotter arms and it's something that I use for high step ups or heel taps. And then you've just got so many different little pieces to it. This one right here is the Bulldog Pad. And this is a nice little piece for the Sorenex Rack. And I use this primarily for chest supported rows, but you could also adjust the angle of it and make it into a seat. And you can put this anywhere on the rack. So I could put this here, I could put it on the jammer arms, I could put it on the other side of the rack. My setup here, I'll put my bulldog pad down. My setup here right now was for some Nordics that I was doing last night. So I've got a whole Nordic station here too. And this also pops off and on. It can go on other places on the rack. And in addition to that style pad, we also have a lot of other types of things that attach to the rack. So we can attach a rear foot elevated split squat pad. We can adjust the height of that, use it for Copenhagen exercise or a lot of other things. Pretty much anything that you can get creative or think about, you can do with these. You could set up one low back here and one higher in front and do back raises with it too. So there's a lot of things you can do with these. And I love the versatility of these style racks. Rogue, Rep Fitness, Titan Fitness also make this style rack with your four, it's called a four-way hole post. So you've got holes on all four sides of the post and you can basically just attach anything anywhere you want. So you can use these hitch pins and attach a band anywhere you want. I've got band pegs here too. So there's just a lot of different things you can do with it. You've got your landmine attachment on here. 
And again, in the nature of spreading things out, quite a few different tools kind of spread out throughout here. The other line mounts down here. And it just gives me an opportunity to do more exercises than I would be able to if, if everything was squeezed up against the rack. And funny story, so this landmine right here, this is an old Elite FTS landmine called a Core Blaster. It's probably at least 10 years old. And this plate right here, I bought this one 100 pound plate off a woman from Craigslist. And she said, my son left this at my house and I don't know what to do with it. It was in her basement in a closet and she couldn't pick it up. <laughs> so I went to this woman's house. I think I paid her like 50 bucks for this 100 pound plate. And I, it was perfect. Cause like who the hell wants to buy one single 100 pound plate? I knew I wanted one because I wanted a nice permanent base for my landmine. So it worked out really well. In addition to the Sornex rack, I have squat stands. And you might be asking yourself, why would I squat with squat stands when I've got this big, beautiful, solid rack behind me? The reason is that these Alico squat stands are elite. They have roller J cups, so I can slide my bar side to side very easily to get it centered. I can adjust them so they're closer together. So if I'm walking out with a bar, I don't ever have to worry about the plates hitting the sides of the uprights, which is really annoying when you're doing some sort of max effort work. And I just like the feeling of squatting with the squat stand better. I used to compete in powerlifting, so I, when I'm squatting, I bring the stand out here. I prefer to face into the room when, when I'm squatting rather than face the wall or face a mirror. So that's just a personal preference. And it also gives me a little bit more flexibility, again, so that we can spread things out and we could have somebody squatting and they're not blocking the use of the cable because if I were squatting over here, I would be blocking the use of the cables. So as, as great as this Apex Rack is, it's something to consider if you're ever putting together a commercial gym that maybe it's a little bit too condensed, but it's fantastic for a home gym. Now let's talk about barbells because every good home gym is gonna have a variety of barbells. Barbells are the tools that we use to get stronger. And a lot of people, kind of traditionalists, kind of tend to get a little dogmatic about barbells. They, they love the straight bar. Me personally, I have no allegiance to the straight bar whatsoever. My favorite bar to press with is this Rep Fitness Swiss bar. I also have an Elite FTS Swiss bar at, at work at Healthy Baller, and I love that one too. My favorite bar to squat with, especially after my shoulder surgeries and my lack of flexibility in my shoulder, is the Kabuki Strength Transformer Bar. Before my most recent shoulder surgery, I had a little bit more flexibility and I squatted with the Duffalo Bar religiously for years. This is also Kabuki Strength. I like straight bar deadlifts. That's probably the time that I use the straight bar the most. However, I also love trap bar deadlifts. And this Kabuki, open trap bar is the best trap bar on the market. It's got this nice kind of self, self racking position here where it stands on its side, it gets out of the way. You can swap in and out the handles for different handle widths. I used to have the fat jumbo handles on the low handles and I decided to swap those out because I was tired of not being able to grip my bar, but they were fun and they were a good challenge. So the Kabuki open, open trap bar is not cheap but it is, it's definitely the best trap bar on the market. It's, it's fantastic. Something else that I really plan for with this gym, in addition to the litany of barbells and the rackable easy curl bar, where do I put my weights and how do I make this work the best? So I decided to get some heavier weights, some 55 pounders. And so this is kind of like where I deadlift right here. It's nice, it's close to the weights. I don't have to walk all the way over there. I know I'm kind of lazy but I'm close to the weights and it's easy. So I love having my, my different color weights. I also did that for an aesthetic purpose because I, I felt like with, with doing videos in here, it would look nice to have some different color weights. And to be honest, I've never had color bumpers before, so it was exciting for me to go out and get some. In addition to the rear foot elevated split squat pads that we have on the Sornex rack, I also have my old school Ankle Rester 3000. And I like the Ankle Rester 3000 better than using the split squat pad. I feel a little safer with it because I know that I'm never gonna slide off the side. 
And sometimes when you're switching feet and you've got like 90 pound dumbbells in both your hands, you don't wanna be bothered to try to look back and make sure where you are. I just know that I can trust that my foot is not ever going to slide off. And it actually happened to me one time where my foot almost slid off when I was doing a split squat, a rear foot elevated split squat with, with one of the pads off the side of the rack. And that was when I kind of had that oh shit moment. And I was like, you know what? I think I like split squat stands better. So I didn't realize that I liked them better, but now I know I do. So I hold on to it, even though it's probably uh, one of the older pieces of equipment in this gym besides that plate. Couple other little things that all home gyms need to have. You gotta have a good stereo system. So, we got the Sonos going here. Boom. Gotta show, Justin, we gotta show the sub there, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we've got the SVS. We've got the SVS 1000 watt sub. Got the mounted speakers, got the Sonos amp. So we are pumping watts down here. We get loud. You can hear this system outside and down the street if you want to. But I love bumping loud music when I'm getting a good training session in. And then in addition to the dumbbells and the fat bells, I also have just kind of like your standard set of kettlebells going from four kilos up to 72 pounds. And that's about as heavy as I need for bells. Occasionally I'll swing with something a little bit heavier, but I didn't really think that I needed it. Plus I don't have a good place to store those right now. I'm trying to not out order my storage and start to keep things on the floor everywhere because that kind of annoys me personally. I like to get my gym equipment up off of the floor as much as possible. And then in addition to all of this kind of lifting stuff, I've got all the regular cable attachments that you would want. This is actually a pretty nice attachment. It's from Rep Fitness. I like the way that the hands bulge a little bit and it's got this knurling on here. So I've been using this for triceps recently. Uh, I've also got a nice knurled lat pull down bar from Rep Fitness as well that I really like. I really tried to avoid like the ergo grip type of, type of lat pull down bars. I didn't want anything with black rubber on it. I wanted metal because this lasts much longer. Black rubber tends to tear or rip after a few years. And then we've also got the Liebert Fitness Parallettes, which are just a fantastic option for a push up handle. So. Some of you guys might know I'm really big into depth push-ups and working on shoulder extension range of motion. I think it's great for your shoulders. And so I use these most training blocks for something, whether it's just like body weight ISO holds, whether it's low rep with a weight vest on, there's a lot of different push-up variations that I use. And these push-up parallel, the parallel handles are fantastic for them. Uh, a couple other things we have. So we've got the change plates over here. So all you've seen out there is big plates, but I've got two pairs of two and a half, fives and tens back here. Just because even though you have 10 pound bumpers and you have the different plates, it's nice to have your little change plates. I love the Spud Ink cable handle here. This is a nice wide handle. And then I've also got the old school knurled grip cable handle as well. So these are two different options. They're both fantastic, but I highly recommend the Spud Ink handle as well as Spud Ink long ab strap. This is a great triceps press down tool. Also great for pull throughs. And then lastly, I'll, I'll just show you guys my weightlifting belt. So I've got, I've got my lever Inzer belt. This is an 11 mil millimeter belt. This is my belt of choice. It's much more comfortable and doesn't bruise your ribs the same way as a 13 millimeter belt does but I've also got this 13 millimeter belt with prongs and this guy right here, it's also a little bit wider. This will bruise your ribs. This will leave me with bruises on my stomach after I do squats or deadlifts with it, but makes you feel real secure, helps you to get your air. I would highly recommend if you're starting off with belts, something thinner like this. This is more traditionally a deadlift belt as well. Deadlift belts tend to be a little bit thinner than squat belts. And the lever system is fantastic. So you set it to whatever your size is, and then you never have to adjust it again. You just put it on, tighten it, and you're good to go. So when I use this, I usually put it on backwards and then just tighten it when it's behind my back, and it feels pretty good. 
So these belts are each probably eight to 10 years old, back from when I was competing in powerlifting. I've been using them recently. I actually went a few years without ever squatting or deadlifting with a belt, but I've been starting to use one again as I'm kind of experimenting with pushing weights and it's felt pretty good. Last thing I wanna show you guys is all of the sliding implements. So sliding exercises are extremely important. They're extremely helpful. So we've got our slide board right here. This is a mini slide board. I prefer just using the mini slide board because I'm not really using, I'm not really using the backstop of the slide board very often. Throw these sliders over the valve slide and gives me a great surface to do all of my different lunge variations and any other sliding exercises you guys can think of, hamstring curls, ab rollouts, that sort of thing. And when I was grabbing my slide board, I knocked over my magnetic clips. This was a gift from Elite FTS sponsored strongman Andy Deck, who was a physical therapy student of mine many years ago. So Andy is good people and I love these clips. So they're really nice. You just pop them right on there. They stay in place. And when you're changing your weight, you just pop it on the plate. Really nice. And then the last sliding piece that we have is the Sorenex glute ham roller. A lot of people know about these now. For many years, these weren't very popular. There were only a few people out there that had them, but the glute ham roller is great. It's great for ab rollouts. Uh, I don't even use an ab wheel anymore. It's made that obsolete. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Dr. Teddy with Citizen Athletics, and this is the Home Gym Tour.